Tom Donnie here. We're going to talk about some old school Saab tuning. We see a few engines like this every now and then. We've even done head work for some people around the world that are doing performance stuff this way. Uh, real quick, this is a early Monte Carlo block, a 731015. And then we got the 7310129 head. And the thinking used to be that these heads, and this we're talking probably you know, in, the, in the early 60s, uh, that the heads, and they were not made very good. This is actually one of the better JM heads. But uh, the heads were, if you cut, say, 4 millimeter off the surface, it would make the head warp. And it was, the head wasn't strong enough to handle that. So the solution was, well, let's take 4 millimeter off the block. Now our piston's proud of the block, so we have to make modifications, right? Because that, that piston is going to come up and it's going to bang if we don't do something to the head. So what they did is they came in here and recessed the pockets on the head. So those pockets have a 5 millimeter recess. And you've got a 4 millimeter decked off the block. These are original Saab dished performance, high performance pistons that Saab sold back in the day. I've sent them out and had them covered in or coated with uh, Teflon and put a ceramic coating on the surface and you notice it's got two rings well guess what else has two rings all my quality Weisco pistons so these are just a cast piston they're not a forged like the the Weisco is and the thing to remember too now if we increase our bore size you know now our head gas has got to be bigger around anything over 71 is going to bang I've actually had rebuild engines come in the shop had never been ran that would basically knock every 120 degrees because the head had never been relieved to fit a 70.5 millimeter piston so that's something you can't do but this was old school tuning this is how they this is how they handled the problem of how do we keep the head from warping do it to the block and of course today we cut the heads all the time don't worry about it too much there are some non-jm heads which is a little bit harder to do with because they they can warp a bit but um you know, uh, milling the head is kind of a personal preference. I'm not a huge fan of it in most cases, but uh, you certainly can do it. What we do, we do a little bit different is uh, we actually fill the pocket. This is one of our Bonneville heads. We fill the pocket full of aluminum or aluminum, and then uh, we cut out, instead of a hammy, we cut out a conical pocket. And then we run, of course, a flat top piston. This is um, a billet piston. We use billet pistons at, at Bonneville. Um, that's kind of a, a quick way you can gain some intake duration by cutting a little off the bottom of your piston if you want to do it for do, testing on the dyno. But, uh, you know, this is just old school. Um, people wouldn't really do this anymore. And uh, I, every now and then, believe it or not, I get requests for uh, pistons with three rings. And, yeah, I guess I don't know quite how to answer that. Um, I did check with, with uh, Weisco one time, and they're like, you know, we don't have the tooling for that. Don't have anything. There's not a piston made today for a two-stroke engine that has three rings that they could even think of. So that's really backward thinking. Wouldn't be something I'd want to be a part of. Um, it's kind of like saying, you know, I, I think I'll, I think I want to run DOS, and I want to use my dial-up modem. Um, you know, this other stuff's just, you know, it's just, it's not right. That old dial-up worked great. And, you know, my old bias tires, they were good. Why do we need radials? Yeah, I know I'm going down the road at 90 mile an hour, but eh, I think that's overrated. So I think that's the philosophy when you go to two rings versus three rings and skinny rings versus fat rings. You know, the skinny rings are there for a reason. Um, you, can't, you can't buy anything with fat rings today. It's just antiquated technology. And as technology goes on, our, change, our thinking changes with it. But uh, this is we're going to take this to the museum out in Sturgis and keep it to show people because it is an interesting piece it is set up and ready to run all i got to do yet is put on the, put on the front pulley i got the i think the pulley's out being powder coated right now but uh we'll get it all ready ran compression on it didn't have as much compression as i thought it would especially given the the big durations it has because it has quite a bit of duration <laughs> excuse me so we had 140 127 and 135 i really thought we'd have more um you know, but at our Bonneville engine, I set a lot of records at 130, 135 PSI compression. A lot of records. Ran 121 mile an hour, I think, it, with that kind of compression. So you can go fast. It's all how you utilize your head design and uh, expansion chamber, your intake manifold, carburation. That all factors in. So just a quick look at a few things. And um, keep in mind, if, uh, 
there is a measurement that I've got. Just you just measure some factory blocks and see what that is. Then you can tell if your your block's been decked. I can tell just by looking at it. It's been decked because it's thin here. But this is one of those that have been just someone else grabbed it and started building it to be like, what the hell's going on here? You know, you know, and you say it didn't have the head with it. You'd you'd fight yourself trying to figure out what's going on. And sometimes we only deck a block a little bit. So anyway, uh, keep us in mind if you need some quality. Weisco racing pistons, also good comedic head gaskets. Um, these things are so good, we actually run them over at Bonneville. I know that's hard to, hard to imagine, but uh, we do. We run them again. So that's all I got for today. This is Tom Donnie from Sturgis in Fort Dodge, Iowa, signing off.